Good morning. Chocolate. Who doesn't like chocolate? Well, with Christmas behind us, I guess most, if not all of us, have eaten chocolate at some time in the last two weeks or so. A and maybe you have lots of chocolate still to consume. Did you know that chocolate is not mentioned in the Bible? You probably did. Chocolate, or cocoa, originated in South America over 1,000 years before the birth of Christ. So we should not expect chocolate to be part of an Israelite's diet. Of course, today, some of the main Christian and Jewish celebrations all involve chocolate. There's chocolate at Hanukkah, there's chocolate at Easter, and chocolate at Christmas. But just because chocolate is not mentioned in the Bible doesn't mean people in the Bible never had sweet things to taste. Honey was very popular in the Bible times. Its sweetness making it the Bible's equivalent of chocolate and candy. And the Bible says a lot about honey. Probably the most well-known is the Lord's promise that he will bring the Israelites into the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And of all the images the Lord could have used, and in the Old Testament he does use some others, he most frequently describes the great promise of a place where the Israelites can live and worship under his love and grace with these two, milk and honey. Milk and honey become symbols of God's blessing and bounty. Honey is mentioned in other places in the Old Testament too. Sometimes it symbolizes joy, sometimes it symbolizes temptation. But if there's another well-known use of honey, it's this. Honey symbolizes the sweetness of God's word. In fact, God's word is sweeter than honey. Psalm 19 verse 10 says, the commands of God are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. Psalm 119 verse 103 says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. No wonder when Ezekiel is told to deliver God's prophetic word, he must first eat the scroll of God's prophecy. And this scroll tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth, he says in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 3. So, milk and honey are an image of God's promise. And honey is a metaphor of the sweetness of God's word. Put in today's language, we could say, God's promise is like cream and chocolate. And God's word is richer than chocolate. Maybe you don't need an excuse to eat chocolate. Maybe you do. Either way, go get a piece of chocolate. And as you taste the chocolate, give thanks to God for his promises to you and for his promise to bring you safely into his eternal rest, the heavenly promised land. And give thanks for his word. For as we listen to his word, read his word and obey his word, may our lives be like the sweetness of God's love to others. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you 
because you are so good and so gracious. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, that your love is a promise, a promise seen in the death of Jesus for our sins and his resurrection, a promise that brings us into the hope of eternity. And how sweet that is, oh, far better than milk or honey. And Lord, we thank you for your word, for your word speaks to us and encourages us. And truly, it is sweet in our lives. Help us, Lord, to welcome and savour and consider your word. Oh Lord, we thank you. We praise you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As you perhaps look over the chocolate that you have, maybe from Christmas even, and as you have maybe only occasionally a piece of chocolate. Celebrate God's blessing and God's bounty over your life. He loves you and he has brought you into his family through Jesus Christ, his son. Be blessed today.